Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the final uh, SNOMED CT research webinar of 2021. Um, I'm Susie Roy, the Customer Relations Manager for the Americas, uh, Collaboration Specialist and Research Engagement Lead at SNOMED International, and as always, the host of the SNOMED CT research webinar series. Um, I have just a couple of really quick housekeeping items that everyone should be familiar with by now, but um, as usual, everyone is muted during the webinar. However, if you have any questions as we go along, go ahead and enter those questions into the Q&A box. Um, and we will have a Q&A portion at the end of today's presentation and hopefully some uh, excellent discussion with um, you, the audience. As always, this webinar is being recorded and both these slides and the video will be made available later this week. Um, for those who are new, um, of course, uh, welcome. Um, just to let you know that in addition to this research series, we also have a clinical track and an implementation uh, track. And these other webinars focus a little bit more on uh, clinical implementation of SNOMED CT. But these webinars are always free to uh, join. You just have to register to attend live or you can watch the recordings later. And you can visit snomed.org slash web dash series to view any of these upcoming webinars. We will be kicking off 2022 with a presentation from Dr. Anna uh, Rosender from the Region Vastra Gotlanda and Gotland Univers Gothenburg University. Um, she'll be presenting SNOMED CT uh, terminology binding, a state of the art review with recommendations for practice and research. Um, this is based on a publication that I'm really excited to have uh, Dr. Rosender present on and um, for any of the stimulating uh, discussions that we'll have thereafter. So I hope you join us on Wednesday, January 19th, 2022 um, at 15 UTC. And um, if you'd like to be notified of upcoming research related news and events like upcoming research webinars or other sorts of um, research events that we have, you can join our SNOMED CT research reference group. To join, you just need to email me. My email is listed here, sro at snomed.org, and I will get you on that list. And as I alluded to, um, if you missed any of our webinars over the past two years, you can view those videos and a lot more on our SNOMED International YouTube channel. Um, you can actually subscribe to that channel so that you will be notified of any uh, new videos that are dropped. And now for the main event. So Dr. Peter Kremen uh, is a um, ontologist and an R&D researcher, currently the head of knowledge-based and software systems group at the Czech Technical University in Prague in the uh, Czech Republic. His professional interests uh, involved ontology modeling, data architecture, and development of related tooling. Today's talk will uh, look at SNOMED CT and how it's not only a healthcare terminology, but also an ecosystem of technical standards and tools for management. And today um, we look forward to discussing the potential of the SNOMED CT ecosystem to manage terminologies of other non-healthcare domains. So with that, Dr. Kremen will be presenting is SNOMED CT just for healthcare. Peter, I send the screen over to you. Thank you very much, Susie. So, uh, I'm able to share my screen. I hope you can see it. Yes, perfect. Perfect, perfect. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone, wherever you are on the earth. Um, this webinar will be a bit, uh, bit special, maybe in a, in a, in its topic and also content. Uh, and I hope it will uh, open some discussion about. Uh, what actually SNOMED CT is, because uh, through the years it evolved in many different senses. Of course, the content evolved, evolved a lot, but also the tooling, the standards. And uh, it maybe reached some point where it uh, is reasonable to think about whether some bits of it are not reusable to some other domains that are maybe not so uh, evolved yet. So that's the main 
uh, idea of this uh, of this presentation. Don't try to invent the wheel. Let's just try to realign it, and maybe uh, it will be useful for someone else. Uh, there are several questions that I would like to tackle. This uh, this presentation will definitely give you an, an answer on any of these, but I would like to touch them. Uh, basically, uh, Snowmet CT, uh, as I said, is a quite a big ecosystem of uh, tools and standards. And first question is whether some of them can be reused outside healthcare. Uh, in order to answer this, it's definitely necessary to take a look actually what's the current situation in Snowmed CT and which bits are healthcare agnostic. Uh, fair is also to discuss what will be the key benefits and obstacles in doing this. And uh, I will try to exemplify uh, all these questions and uh, points raised on one domain, uh, and that's the aviation safety domain. Uh, the reason uh, actually why uh, I decided uh, for, for this domain uh, is on this slide. This shows my very a few milestones in my life. Uh, the first two, 2007 and 12, were rather theoretical. So I was doing my PhD mainly in the uh, old, uh, reasoning and description logic query uh, answering. And then uh, since 2016, basically, I jumped a bit more uh, to the let's say practical uh, practical issues of ontology management, and I basically uh, export three domains. One was the aviation safety, and that's the domain that I would like to tackle today. And uh, the reason is that um, we had quite uh, quite a few uh, projects on that with commercial partners, and we also developed some uh, ontologies around. So I have this domain quite settled in my in my brain. Then I, uh, in 2019, I got actually the exper uh, experience with Snowmed CT because I, uh, I implemented it in one uh, healthcare company in London. Uh, and now I'm uh, in another domain, uh, mainly working uh, on the e-government uh, data modeling and knowledge graph creation. So uh, that's just to show the uh, spectrum of, uh, of my interests. I'm always inside the ontology. Uh, content and uh, tooling around, not so much on the uh, domain knowledge itself. So I'm not an expert in any of the domains you can see here. So uh, what shall we touch today? First thing, uh, I would like to give you a quick intro to the aviation safety um, domain itself. It will be an example. So I expect that most of the things that uh, we will discuss today will be somehow reusable, generalizable, but Actually, it was the only experiment that I did, so uh, it's more on the discussion and uh, I don't dare to generalize it my, on my own. So uh, let's start with the, uh, with the quick intro. Uh, then uh, I will uh, get on the topic of how actually the safety reporting scenario can be snoomerized. So what does it mean to uh, actually uh, take the safety reporting and uh, uh, create a SNOMED compatible uh, data structure out of that. And then there will be some uh, benefits and challenges section when I would, uh, I would like to uh, discuss what actually uh, can, be, uh, can be expected when we uh, SNOMEDize uh, the aviation safety reporting stuff. And uh, the last point is the summary. So let's jump in. Uh, aviation safety reporting, uh, crash course uh, would be uh, would be like that. I don't know whether any of you is familiar with the domain, but it's uh, actually, uh, in a sense, quite similar to the, for example, electronic health records, but uh, only to some extent. You can imagine one of the scenario which is very typical, uh, as you can see on this picture. So there is some accident or is incident in uh, in aviation industry. For example, the airplane crashes or even some smaller incident happens. And then all the inter involved parties are obliged to create some reports and to perform their own investigation. So for example, the airline uh, uh, creates a report, the aerodrome creates a report as well. And then they are also obliged to uh, report uh, all their findings to the authorities. Uh, the authorities uh, collect them in some systems 
And in Europe, the system is called ECARIS, which uh, is an abbreviation for European Coordination Center for Accident and Incident Reporting Systems. Uh, and it actually means many things. It is uh, basically the software in which the reports are created, stored and managed. But it also describes the knowledge structure which is behind. So ECARIS uh, has some uh, knowledge uh, model which is uh, rich on taxonomies, rich on uh, information model links. And this is where the SNOMED story can start. Uh, one, more, uh, one more remark on this is that basically the reporting uh, to this ECAR system is done on the national level, but the access to these reports uh, is both for the national authorities and also for the European uh, Union Aviation Safety Agency, which is the uh, EU-wide uh, authority for uh, observing these uh, these incidents. So that's it. Uh, if you uh, want to report uh, as a, uh, as a, for example, airline operator, you have several options. One is that you will use some form that is shown here. Uh, this form is provided by, uh, by EASA and uh, you can just fill everything in and send it and you are done. If you do it like that, you, uh, the authorities are happy, but you in your organization probably won't be happy too much because you will need to basically do a lot of uh, translations and a lot of uh, double writing the same things because uh, you have already written your report before for the internal tool process. So there's quite a lot of duplication of work when doing it like that. In order to uh, overcome this problem, uh, the ECAR system or the European Aviation, uh, Aviation Safety Agency provides some uh, uh, data standard, uh, some format, which is called E5X, but it is not important, which uh, allows the organizations to create uh, the machine readable form of these reports and send them through the machine readable uh, data format. But uh, in order to understand the machine readable data format, the organization needs to understand the ECARS knowledge model. And this is where the organizations come to ECARS. What you can see is actually the ECARS uh, taxonomy browser. It's a, but, uh, what you can see in the left tree, there is basically the hierarchy of uh, so-called uh, so entities and attributes. So for example, occurrence is the top level uh, entity saying that this is actually the whole report speaking, uh, speaking in terms of the, uh, of the report, uh, which consists of sections, aircraft and events. And each of these sections might have some fields like speed or event type or stuff like that. And there are many of these attributes and many of these sections. To fill some of these attributes, you can use uh, data values, but also you can use some uh, taxonomies and the taxonomies are represented by what is called value in uh, in ECARS and it's basically a, a single hierarchy of uh, of terms uh, and uh, each of these values has some has some metadata around so descriptions explanations and so on so this is what actually the ECARS looks like. You cannot do much in the tool. You can download some structure or representation of the taxonomy in some XML format, and you can explore uh, basically uh, attribute by attribute uh, what's in. Uh, as I said, this brings some challenges. Uh, one of them I already mentioned. So uh, if I'm an organization in aviation safety, how can I avoid double reporting? Uh, the other is, how can I basically even understand what ECARS is about? It's a complex system, even not so large as Snow at CT. It still contains dozens of thousands of uh, terms and content. Uh, the problem is if I want to use uh, ECARS, I'm obliged to, <laughs> uh, I'm obliged to report in ECARS, but if, I'm, uh, uh, if, I, if I would like to uh, reuse ECARS for internal reporting, it would be too coarse grained for me because the categories are not detailed enough for uh, the uh, organizations. They need more uh, information for their internal investigation. So it is, it is good, but on a higher level. And 
tooling, there is basically no uh, reasonable available tooling for that. So if you would like to um, create your own taxonomy based on ECHRs, you basically are uh, are lost and end up with pen and paper or Excel uh, in the best. So let's take a look a uh, bit more into, into details. The aviation safety report, as I uh, showed, uh, is basically uh, some uh, form which can be represented in some graph-like structure. And uh, here is a small excerpt of one of them. You can see a, a event of runway incursion, which is uh, the situation when an aircraft is, is approaching runway and something uh, occurs on the runway, like a vehicle or another aircraft or so on. And um, this is quite a famous incident or very, uh, very popular incident. And uh, it is typical that this incident will be recorded as an event type in one of the events that uh, is reported in the occurrence. So this would be a typical model. Uh, the blue bits is what we would call an information model. And the yellow bits is what we would call uh, the, uh, the semantic part or the taxonomy. And this is actually very similar if you compare it to electronic health records. So if you take the example, for example, Fire and Snowman CT, uh, you can see the you can see the similarity. So you can, for example, have, have an encounter with a condition, and the condition have a code of pain in right lower limb uh, as a Snowman CT code. So in the sense, this is similar. The only difference is that in ECHRs, the information model is represented directly in the in the taxonomy, while uh, SNOMED CT, uh, let's say, concept model is more used for the validation than for the actual uh, actual uh, reporting. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that was the quick intro, and now let's take a look into uh, what can be done with uh, with this structure. Quick overview of these two uh, taxonomies shows that uh, SNOMED CT is much bigger, but uh, ECHRS is still of reasonable size, approximately uh, four times smaller. Uh, SNOMED CT is a multi hierarchy, while ECHRS is a single hierarchy, mainly currently because there is, uh, the hierarchy is very, I would say, simple and naive. There are no descriptions or no axiomatizations of the values in the hierarchy. Uh, but otherwise, there are it will go quite similar taxonomies themselves. Uh, SNOMED CT is uh, inherently multilingual, while ECHRS is not, mainly because you know, on the European level all the communication uh, about aviation safety is in English, so uh, there was no need up to, up to now to do it. And now uh, let's get to the topic of, uh, of the talk. So SNOMED CT can be uh, seen as an ecosystem of several different things. One is the actual infrastructure. I mean, the, uh, the standards, the documentation described being the concept model, the identification, um, the mapping mechanism, ref sets, the distribution management, queries through ECL and so on. Uh, beside that, uh, there is some health card content created using uh, these guidelines and, uh, and tools and the actual tooling, the software that uh, helps to do it. So terminology servers, offering tools and uh, some visualization tools and so on. And if you would like to uh, get on uh, aviation safety, it should be as easy as just change the content. Uh, I will get into more details how the content is organized, but uh, just to um, give you a quick uh, overview of what actually the uh, data processing uh, happens, there is, uh, it, looks, it looks like that. Uh, there is the uh, standard, I would say more or less standard SNOMED CT, uh, SNOMED CT stack uh, containing the Snowstorm server and SNOMED CT browser as a simple uh, authoring and visualization tooling. Um, there is the uh, first input to this uh, Snowstorm server is the SNOMED CT uh, International Edition. And the reason is that um, in order to do the experiment, uh, I needed the uh, concept model. And the concept model, the smallest possible bit that I found with concept model is the International Edition. Uh, then there is a custom importer that basically takes the ECHRS taxonomy file and creates, uh, creates the 
concept in South Snowstorm, so it doesn't translate into RF2 uh, format uh, immediately. It goes through the server um, using its uh, identification generator and so on. So uh, this is the reason why it communicates directly with the server server tool. And then uh, there is uh, there is the RF2 export and uh, some uh, operations for managing the extensions are done through simple REST client up to now. So that's that was the experiment setup. Uh, if we take a look uh, on the concept model alignment, we can see quite a lot of similar things and quite a lot of differences between ECARS and SNOMED CT. First. Uh, all of uh, both both standards speak about some sort of uh, some sort of uh, concepts or entities in this sense, uh, but concepts are more general. Actually, all the entities, attributes, and values can be uh, understood as concepts. But there is one uh, key difference between the two standards, and that's the notion of the uh, relationships and attributes. The reason is that relationship in SNOMED CT are the actual links while attributes are the uh, relationship types. Uh, and the other difference is that uh, the uh, object attribute that we would uh, create in SNOMED CT uh, would actually uh, be a bit different here because uh, the value of an object attribute in Edkars is not actually another entity, but it's a value. So you can reuse it for uh, for other attributes. So this is a sort of limitation of ECARS. It doesn't allow to provide values to uh, sorry attributes to values. Uh, as you can see, there are there are two hierarchical structures. So entities uh, are uh, composed uh, into a hierarchy and values as well. Uh, on the entity side, it basically reflects just the reporting scheme. It is not very um, not very fancy from the knowledge management point of view. But on the value side, the hierarchy basically uh, models the uh, ISA uh, hierarchy or tries to do it. So taking this into account, uh, there is, uh, let's say, uh, just a quick review of how the mapping has been done. And most of it I already told you. So uh, the uh, attributes are mapped to the uh, relationship types. The triples entity attribute value is mapped to a relationship. Uh, then there is some um, currently quite arbitrary decision how to map the descriptions uh, which are inside ECARS to the SNOMED descriptions. And uh, the key, uh, let's say, challenge remains what to do with the identification, because obviously ICARS identifiers are completely different from uh, the SNOMED CD identifiers and there is some need to, uh, to manage this, uh, this correspondence. So this is just an exemplification of a simple, uh, single entity uh, as seen by uh, ECARS and as seen by the SNOMED CT after performing the transformation. So you can see, for example, the uh, events object uh, which is its entity uh, ID 14, uh, this is its uh, disc detailed description and so on. And this is where it actually uh, is within the hierarchy. So it has several attributes, three attributes in this view, and one more entity descriptive factor, which is below. When the translation is uh, finished, uh, actually the entity is transformed to a new SNOMED CT concept. Uh, and uh, the sub-entities are linked to this uh, new concept through uh, another relationship refers to, and the existing attributes, which uh, already uh, were present in, uh, in ECARS, are transformed to, a new, to new attributes of SNOMED CT. So that's basically the uh, uh, main idea. And now uh, get to, uh, let's say, more practical things. This was quite high level at this point, where I would like to really discuss once this is done, what uh, the benefits and challenges uh, uh, could be observed. So one clear benefit, for example, in a case of ECARS is the uh, exploration capability. So when this transformation is done, uh, it is quite uh, useful to use faceted search in SNOMED CD browser because it's much more powerful than the uh, search in the uh, ECARS Explorer. Uh, the other is 
uh, actually the possibility to use uh, formal queries uh, in ECL to explore the ACARS content. So this is this is definitely uh, quite uh, quite good. Um, on this screenshot, you can see uh, you can see uh, one one example, um, and that's the ex uh, example of uh, of uh, searching for for an incursion, which is uh, uh, which is a type of uh, of uh, event or an occurrence in in ECARS. and you can see that. Uh, it currently uh, is present in two uh, ref sets, which, which were generated from the uh, from uh, for the values of uh, ECARS attributes. One is for the event type attribute, and the other is the, for the occurrence category attribute. So uh, this is uh, definitely uh, good because you can search over multiple uh, value sets ref sets. Uh, as well, you can search uh, over multiple types of uh, entities, sorry, elements. So you can see both entities and values here and use this faceted search functionality. So this is, this is quite, uh, quite good and uh, actually much better than, uh, than was uh, the, uh, the official, uh, official tool. The other thing actually is, uh, the possibility to uh, explore the value lists for um, individual attributes in detail. So, for example, here you can see uh, the content of the event, event type reference, which corresponds to the value list of the event types, which will be the options that will jump in uh, to some input field of, of a ECARS reporting tool when the person is uh, asked to uh, decide what event type happened. So uh, this is actually the set that can be uh, can be got uh, directly from the tool and explored. Um, this is uh, another possibility uh, to exploit the uh, visualization uh, showing what actually is the structure of, uh, of the events, uh, events entity. Uh, this is more a technical link, but it basically shows in a graphically quite uh, reasonable way what are the attributes and what are the links to other uh, parts of the schema. Uh, what I already mentioned is that uh, in addition to this uh, UI itself, it is possible to make use of the ECL, uh, ECL queries. So for example, if I, I would like to populate my uh, ECARS tool by existing event types, it's quite easy for me to just get the whole ref set of events types and uh, I will get it into my UI. Uh, I can even go into more details and, for example, uh, fetch the top level categories for one particular attribute. So I will try to find all the parents of one, uh, one event type and get uh, the first, uh, first uh, under the root, the first, uh, first level. Uh, it belongs to the first category it belongs to. So in this case, it would uh, get me, for example, uh, for me some uh, type of operational event. But uh, as you can see, the ECL queries are quite basic. The reason is that uh, there is no uh, no modeling behind. The ECARS taxonomy contains no, uh, no logical model. Uh, and uh, that's why we can uh, cannot go any further at this point of time. Uh, another clear benefit uh, which uh, which is uh, on the uh, table is that, uh, as I said, when I would like to, as an organization, reuse part of the ECAR system, uh, I have the only option to open Excel and just try to uh, track there my extension. And uh, when I am about to uh, create some report, uh, to switch between uh, between ECARS and my Excel, which is which is not fancy. The ECARS itself doesn't provide any uh, any easy uh, and feasible way to extend it, except of asking the uh, the authority, either national or European one, to extend the system, which is not uh, which is not good. So, if I would like to create uh, create uh, ECARS compatible airport, but to a level of detail that I that I want, I need some way to extend it in an ECARS compatible way. 
for this. I also need some architecture. And uh, this is where uh, Eckhart's extension mechanism quite help quite a lot. So imagine this example, you have a runner incursion uh, by vehicle, but in this case, the vehicle actually is a bus. And uh, I am an aerodrome operator and bus incursion is actually uh, quite often happening in my case, which is definitely not, not a real case. It's just invented by me for the purpose of this talk. Uh, so one option is that I will just uh, I will ju just record it as a classical runway incursion by a vehicle. It's not a problem, but maybe for me it is not enough. So if I would like to go into more detail, I can invent uh, another code. For example, a runway incursion by a bus and specialize it from the runway incursion by a vehicle. But uh, I have no option to put it into a cars. And this is uh, where it is possible to actually reuse the extension mechanism to collect these concepts. Uh, a good benefit of this is also that uh, when you do it like that, uh, you can use the uh, classification, in, or in this case, even stated, uh, stated relationships to infer what uh, is the nearest possible Eckhart's category which is correct for my report. So if I create my report in these categories, I can still quite easily generate a report for the authority because uh, I just uh, traverse the hierarchy up and see where my first Eckhart's category appears. So um, what can be done? The current experiment that I, that I did is uh, actually uh, uh, has this form. So I took the Snow and City International Edition containing two modules, and I only took the model component module and the core module containing the healthcare uh, content uh, I didn't use. Uh, this also means that there is no alignment, there's no semantic alignment between the uh, healthcare content and the aviation content. So there might definitely be duplicities uh, between, between the terms. Um, so for the model component module, I created an, ex an extension containing of two other modules. One is the uh, replica of Eckhart's uh, taxonomy, and the other is uh, a module which would simulate what an organization, aviation organization, might create for, on their own for uh, extending uh, Eckhart's for their particular purposes. So uh, that's that's the way how to do it uh, in case that uh, there is no. Uh, management of the Eckhart's module itself. Of course, uh, this th there is a big problem that this brings in the uh, huge healthcare, healthcare content inside, which is not, uh, not relevant in any, any sense, and also requires uh, the, or the aviation organization to take care of this transformation of some NCT to Eckhart, but it's doable. Uh, of course, much more uh, useful would be uh, this sort of modular structure when there is some sort of uh, model only edition where the uh, component module is distributed and uh, could be reused directly. Uh, then there is a uh, then there is an the Eckhart's extension which is, is maintained by some uh, by some authority, and then this, there is the custom Eckhart's extension uh, for the particular organization, uh, and it is maintained by the organization. So, uh, of course, that's, that's a chimera, it's uh, just, uh, just the vision and uh, how, it could work, how it could work. And now uh, let's jump quickly in uh, to the uh, taxonomy simplification explorability. This is a very important topic that the SNOMED CT, once the ECARS is in, or any other taxonomy, it can be uh, directly used the uh, review process for actually refining the taxonomy and modeling correctly what it uh, what the content actually means. Uh, so uh, I mean by uh, by that actually uh, refining the uh, refining the concept as I will show and creating post coordinate expressions and define pre coordinate concepts based on that. Based on that. So for example, uh, having the runway incursion by a vehicle, uh, uh, I would like to be able to create. Uh, Two information to add to information. One is that uh, there is some has location attribute which links this uh, 
uh, type of event to uh, a new object called runway and there another one which connects this, uh, to the agent which causes the runway inversion and in this case it's a vehicle. So this sort of parameterization and decomposition of the semantics of the concept will allow to create of course much more uh, much more uh, fancy queries but uh, the reason why I mention it here because it is not even part of, uh, of Eckhart's is that uh, SNOMED CD infrastructure can serve as a tool for doing these refinements because it has all the uh, all the means to, to provide this functionality. Um, so if we would like to go in this way, it's, uh, we would uh, basically reflect this sort of decision by uh, by a concept definition like that. As you can see, I, uh, uh, I offer here the uh, defined concept semantics, although the picture doesn't show it in any way, uh, because in this case it would probably be correct. Um, but uh, what can we do once we, once we do this, uh, this Eckhart's model? We can use it in the ECL queries, for example, uh, getting uh, the uh, locations or sorry, getting those events which has a location runway. For example, when I would like to support uh, report creation, uh, UI in the, in the report creation to get actually only those event types which will be somehow relevant to runway, this would be the way to, uh, to prune it. Uh, another option would be, uh, I have a vehicle participating in the occurrence and I would like to know which event types would be relevant for it. So I can combine even two, uh, uh, Queries one for pruning for the ref set of you know, and I the other is actually the has agent vehicle uh, as agent vehicle uh, constraint. So in this way, I can do much more. Uh, I can get much more from the from the taxonomy. But as I say, it uh, there is this hard work of uh, ontology modeling on the other side. Uh, Defining pre-coding the concept is just a, a clear extrapolation of this idea. So I would, uh, for example, like to take uh, uh, the concept of incursion by vehicle and define it as any incursion which is an agent vehicle and uh, then use the classification inside SNOMED CT to derive this hierarchy. So that's basically it. This last bullet, uh, last benefit was more, uh, more a vision. Uh, I haven't experimented with this last bullet yet because of technical technical issues. Uh, I would like to also uh, just touch some of the some of the challenges very quickly. So one is the as a challenge that I already mentioned, some identifier management. So we have two different taxonomies. They use two different identification schemes. They are not compatible in any sense, and uh, it is necessary to keep track of the mapping. So the naive way that I currently tried was actually to uh, do it through some custom data attributes. Uh, there is obviously another option, maybe even more standard in SNOMED CD ecosystem, and that's through a new ref set, uh, the mapping ref set uh, for uh, between the uh, SNOMED CD concept and the uh, external ACARS, uh, ACARS ID. Uh, in either case, it's necessary to actually uh, get uh, reasonable support for querying these sort of, uh, these sort of attributes um, or these sort of uh, ways to represent identifiers in the ECL or uh, APIs of the, of the tools, in this case, uh, Snowstorm. Uh, the other challenge that I mentioned is the proper conceptualization with, uh, with SNOMED. So what would be actually the benefits, costs of semantic aligning the content? Uh, um, I did some quick uh, overview in this particular case for Echives. There is definitely quite, quite some overlap, but uh, given the complete difference between the domains, uh, the question is whether it would pay off to even delimit, for example, some module that would be, uh, that would be reusable enough so that it doesn't pay off to uh, manage it on both sides. But again, it's really, more a research question than anything else. And uh, then definitely uh, a big, uh, big challenge or big issue are the organizational aspects. So um, there are of course some licensing issues of SNOMED CT, uh, collaboration with a completely different sector, open a completely new uh, types of problems. So this is definitely 
uh, maybe even uh, even even the biggest uh, biggest issue. So these were the three benefits and three challenges that I uh, that I identified. Uh, in a, as a summary, I think that the experiment was quite uh, quite interesting and useful even for me. Hopefully, even for someone else, I can provide uh, details, even the RF2 uh, content to explore it more for anyone interested. And there are lots of uh, things to uh, to. Uh, uh, to do afterwards uh, on top of this but uh, at this point I think my presentation is pretty much done and uh, I would like to thank uh, thank you all for uh, for your attention and uh, I'm uh, happy uh, to get uh, any any question from you so feel free to ask thank you Peter, thank you so much. That was really interesting. I have to say, I don't think I, I've never seen uh, someone apply the uh, SNOMED terminology model to uh, another domain. So this was really, really cool. Thank you. Um, so the Q&A box is open and um, waiting for your questions. I see a couple, but um, just to kind of kick things off, um, and I was trying to figure out, and I think you alluded to this uh, towards the end when you started talking about um, refining the ontology, but one of the huge benefits of SNOMED CT is that it's not just um, a flat list, like a classification, it's actually a poly hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, with myocardial infarction, you um, have, you know, it's a ischemic heart disease, it, it, it's multiple, it, it can be under multiple um, sub hierarchies in the ontology. And so it sounds like at this moment, eCARES is not, or um, is this somewhere where you're going to explore? Uh, yes, uh, eCARES is not. Uh, eCARES actually contains uh, basically completely independent value lists, which are uh, organized into a, a single parent hierarchy. So in this sense, it's much much less expressive than SNOMED CTS. And that is, you know, one of the benefits because I could see, because you talked about, you know, the value of reporting, especially in, you know, major, um, mm -hmm. air, you know, catastrophes and events. Um, so I can see how, you know, having that um, enriched ontology would really benefit so that you would be able to uh, query and um, have more detailed uh, reporting. Uh, absolutely. Actually, during some past projects, we developed some of the ontologies on top of ECARS directly into OWL. But uh, the OWL is, uh, tooling is not mature enough for any commercial company to, to, to use it. So that's basically one of the things. On the content side, I think that uh, the model was quite good. But uh, on the, let's say, technical side, it was not mature enough for anyone to reuse. So that's maybe one thing that I believe uh, Snowman City might help. That that's actually great to hear. That actually slides into uh, one of the questions that I saw in the Q and A box. Um, Peter Williams said, "Oh, wait a minute. Oh, um, it's either Kai Cooley or it's Peter Groves Williams, both uh, SNOMED <laughs> CT staffers with me. Um, so it's either Kai impersonating as Peter or the other way around. Um, but one of them says." Have you considered using an RFD store with a query language like Sparkle? How uh, would that stack compare with the SNOMED tooling? Uh, absolutely. As I said, we even started from that because we, as an academy, academy we basically um, did everything directly into, into some sort of uh, triple store and combining some in-memory reasoning in, in all with some materialized reasoning in some triple store and things were working, but the, the tooling and distribution management, we had to invent everything on our own. And it turned out that actually these were the selling points for the companies. So mm -hmm. they, for them, uh, the, uh, the nice benefits of classification and uh, stuff like that were not very graspable because ICARS uh, need, needs correct curation and they uh, need uh, some way to do it uh, in an efficient way. So it was basically there was basically a big gap between the Sparkle solution and uh, and the uh, and the company. So yes, we did. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Jim Case um, asked, does the current eCares uh, conform to BFO? Um, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't hear you for some reason. Um, does the current eCares conform to BFO? Um, bio found, um, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> No. Uh, I, I don't think so. Actually, okay. um, to, to be honest, I, I know the um, most, I know the Icarus system uh, version 4. This new uh, with version 5, I cannot completely say what's whether there was any, any attempt for conceptualization, but I would doubt, but I'm not totally sure. Um, and um, for those um, BFO, I, I just had to Google it because it ran out of my mind just their basic formal ontology so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i know it just pff, out of my head there <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um uh another question uh, from darren um asked great presentation peter i was it was very interesting seeing snowmed ct in a non-medical field how did you find using ihtsto's open source tooling good question darren Actually, my experience of tooling is basically currently just with three tools, with Snow Owl Server, Snowstorm Server, and the, uh, the Snow, uh, Snowmed City Browser, and uh, actually also with the translator, uh, translator from uh, RF2 to O. I didn't try any other, but uh, basically the Snowstorm Server is, in my view, quite uh, acceptable, although for offering it's probably still quite weak. Uh, so it, uh, it, uh, there are some dedicated tools that I didn't explore yet uh, mm -hmm. for, for offering. So uh, this is another, another journey of mine. But I find them quite, quite, uh, quite good. Yes, I even have some commercial experiments using Snow Owl in the, in the, to, to actually manage the custom extension for, for the healthcare company. And we were quite, quite happy with the solution. Um, I know I have a number of my uh, tech team on today. So there you go. You guys have a new contact um, next time when you need someone to test uh, something in our open source tooling. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, I do have um, another question. Um, so in your, um, I guess, you know, current issues and possible future um, things to look at, you um you mentioned identifier management, and I thought it was interesting that you took the route of looking at it, um, adding it into your view of ontology using uh, a reference set, um, using the ref set identifier, and you did not go the route of using the module ID, because you can kind of think of this more as um, like a fragment. Mm -hmm. And so I just found it really interesting that you took the route of uh, ref set instead, and I was wondering if there was a reason why you did that. Um, I'm not sure I completely understand. So you are saying about using uh, using a module for uh, for for this mapping? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So including it as more of a module uh, rather mm -hmm. than as a reference set, just because the reference set is already going to be included in the whole. But I kind of see this more as like its own fragment of SNOMED CT, and so mm -hmm. I, I would I would tend to lean towards more of the module um, idea instead of. Uh, just incorporating it into the terminology and using it as a reference set. But I know different people think <laughs> differently and we, we don't have to go into the fragment. Um, yeah, I, th I think it would deserve a maybe a longer discussion. I'm definitely <laughs> happy for this <laughs> for this suggestion. I will think about it. <laughs> I, I just found it interesting, yeah, going the route of uh, rough set and if there were any benefits of doing it that way rather than, yeah, having mm -hmm. its own module. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, something to ponder <laughs> in your free time, I guess. <laughs> um, and um, one other question that has come in is from uh, John uh, Steiner. Yes, did you identify any areas where the existing MRCM rules in SNOMED would need to be modified to support pro proper classification of eCares based concepts? Okay, so. <laughs> As I said, um, I did not do any any current um, alignment, content alignment with with the Snowman City content. So I basically <laughs> didn't meet the uh, machine readable concept model yet. It's definitely one uh, one step to be done. Uh, but uh, I even think that uh, the structure which is which is currently in uh, in ECARS could be could be partially translated to the machine readable concept model rules 
that would be dedicated to a cars directly. I'm not sure how to reuse the machine readable concept model uh, without doing the alignment first. Um, okay, Oops, sorry. Okay, there you go. Um, excellent. Um, so I guess um, kind of to, um, you know, what are your next steps? You know, what, what are you planning on next? Where are you going? Um, what type of research next? There's so many different avenues that you could explore. So <laughs> interesting to know, yeah. What are we going to see from you next year at next year's <laughs> the Expo? How's that? I see. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I would like to get to uh, explore these two things to get more now to the content because I think now I explore the ways how to serve the ACARS in some sort of robust way. And now the, my, my question basically would be how to get, uh, get the content to some reasonable level of quality. Uh, so do the refinement, the ontology modeling directly and uh, maybe created some uh, created some uh, pre-coordinated concepts directly from from the content. Yeah. So do the modeling that I did before and replicate it in in Snowmat so that I can see how basically beneficial it would be for the for the organization to have it there. That'd be cool. Yeah. Well, when you uh, get to do that, um, we would love to, yeah, have an update from you. And we are very much looking forward to, yeah. Those sure, you are welcome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will get in touch. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. And with that, um, I will wrap up uh, this month's SNOMED CT research webinar. Um, it's been, uh, so far, an excellent year with some excellent presentations. Thank you so much, Vita, um, Dr. Premin, for presenting today. Um, this was absolutely, you know, different than what we normally see. And it was just really cool to see the SNOMED CT terminology concept model be applied in other domains. So um, with that, um, I will see you all next month to kick off 2022. Until then, take care and see you next time. Bye.